Hello everyone. In today's class, we are going to see different ECGs. Let's begin with a normal ECG. Okay. So, this is an example of normal ECG. If you are asked to read the ECG, first of all, as we have already discussed everything, first of all, you have to look at the standardization marks. Okay. The amplitude of the standardization mark should be 10 mm. Okay. That means the standardization is correct. Next, you should be looking at RR intervals. Okay, look at the RR intervals. Whether is it same, okay, or it is varying. If the RR interval is same, that means the heart rate is regular. Next point will be the calculation of heart rate. As we have already discussed, you should be looking at the number of small or large boxes in between RR interval. For the calculation of heart rate, you divide 300 by number of large boxes in between RR interval. Okay. Or else, 1500 divided by number of small boxes in between RR interval. That will give you the heart rate. Okay. If the heart rate was irregular, then you should be calculating the number of R waves within 6 seconds and multiply it with 10. We have already discussed that. After calculation of heart rate, you should be commenting on different waves, their morphologies, okay, amplitude, duration, etc. And should find out if there is any abnormalities okay, with any waves or any intervals, suppose PR interval, QT interval, ST segments. Okay, These things you should be fine should be finding out so this is about a normal ECG a normal ECG looks like this now coming to the various diagnosis of various diseases or conditions from ECG okay now this ECG if you look very carefully in this ECG you can see there is elevation of ST segment okay in lead 1 elevation of ST segment in lead AVL okay and then elevation of ST segment in V1 V2 in V3 V4 and again you can see there is reciprocal depression. Okay, reciprocal ST depression in lead 2, lead 3 and AVF. So, what will be the diagnosis from this ECG? Okay, this ECG shows there is ST elevation in lead 1, AVL and V1 to V4. Okay, so... This will give you a diagnosis of enterolateral myocardial wall infarction. Okay. Let's see the next ECG. In this ECG, look at the ST segment of lead 2, lead 3 and lead AVF. Okay. So, there is ST elevation in lead 2, 3 and AVF. And look very carefully. There is reciprocal depression. Okay. Reciprocal depression in lead 1, lead AVL and in V1, V2, V3, V4, V5 and V6. Okay. So, this is an ECG of inferior wall myocardial infarction okay now let's see the next ECG fine what is the abnormality in this ECG in this particular ECG if you look at lead 2 this is long lead 2 okay if you look at long lead 2 you'll be able to tell the diagnosis Okay, what is there in long lead 2? 
look at the rr interval okay the rr interval is varying okay it is not same that means the heart rate is irregularly irregular next look at if you can find any p wave okay okay so in this ecg there is no specific p wave preceding the qrs complex okay no p no p no p no p okay so two things we can see from this ecg the heart rate is irregularly irregular and there is no preceding p wave okay so this is an ecg of atrial fibrillation let's see the next ecg okay in this ecg if we look at long lead 2 okay if we look at lead 2 the heart rate is almost regular okay the rr interval is almost same but if you look at the baseline okay this is the baseline okay this is the baseline if you look at the baseline there are sawtooth waves okay sawtooth pattern so these are flutter waves okay so this ecg is an example of atrial flutter with fixed block okay now let's see the next ecg what is the abnormality in this ecg if you look very carefully you can see that the p wave is peaked okay the p wave is peaked tall and peaked okay the amplitude is more than 2.5 mm so this condition is known as p pulmonal we have already discussed these things p pulmonal suggest there is right atrial enlargement okay this is one abnormality in this particular ecg one more thing is that if you calculate the axis qrs axis of this ecg you can see that there is right axis deviation the calculation of axis we already have discussed so i'm not going to elaborate this here this ecg shows there is right axis deviation and look at lead v1 okay in v1 you can see rs r dash pattern okay so this suggests there is right bundle branch block okay so in this ecg there are two things to notice one is right bundle branch block one is right atrial enlargement okay now see the next ecg okay what is the abnormality in this particular ecg if you look very carefully you can see that the pr interval is prolonged okay we already know that the normal duration of pr interval is up to five small box okay when it exceeds five small box or 0 0.2 second that means the PR interval is prolonged and in a particular ECG if there is only prolongation of PR interval we call it as first degree AV block okay so this particular ECG is of a patient with first degree AV block let's see the next ECG okay in this particular ECG, what is the abnormality? If you look very carefully, 
okay in long lead 2 you can see that there is a pattern in this ecg okay there is progressive prolongation of pr interval okay there is progressive prolongation of pr interval until one bit is missed one drop bit is there okay this p wave there is no following qrs complex okay in the preceding complexes there is progressive prolongation of pr interval followed by a missed beat so this is an example of Wenckebeck phenomena okay that is type 1 av block okay second degree type 1 av block or also known as Wenckebeck phenomena Let's see the next ECG. Okay. What is the abnormality here? Okay. This particular ECG shows there is actually there is no relation between the P waves and the QRS complexes. Okay. No relation. Somewhere P is coming before QRS. Somewhere P is coming after QRS. Okay. Somewhere it is coming in between. No following QRS. Okay. So, this is an example of AV dissociation. Okay. We can also call it as complete heart block. Okay. There is no relation between atria and ventricular impulses. Okay. So, this is an example of third degree or complete AV block. Let's see the next ECG. Okay. What is the abnormality here? Okay. This is an ECG of ventricular tachycardia. Why ventricular tachycardia? Because in this ECG, we can see there are bizarre QRS complexes. Okay. There are bizarre QRS complexes. No definite morphology can be identified. We cannot see any P wave. We cannot, uh, we cannot actually say which part is Q, which part is R, which part is S. Okay, so there are bizarre QRS complexes, which is coming in a succession. If this type of complexes come in a succession of three or more, then it is called as ventricular tachycardia. Okay, so this is an example of ventricular tachycardia. Now, let's see the next ECG. Okay. What is the abnormality in this ECG? In this ECG, again, we can see there are different types of QRS complexes. Okay. Different types of QRS complexes. Bizarre. And again, there is no uh, definite morphology. We cannot identify which part is Q, which part is R, which part is S or any P waves. Okay, This is a typical example of ventricular fibrillation. Okay. The previous ECG was ventricular tachycardia and this ECG is of ventricular fibrillation. Fine. These are the few ECGs I wanted to discuss with you.